What is going on, everybody? It's the France, and we're here for our Monday Night Raw review for August the 2nd, 2021. We are two and a half weeks or three weeks away from Summer Scam, Summer's Bank Slam, or Bummer Scam. Well, if you look at the pro if you look at both shows and you line up what the top matches are going to be, you look at SmackDown, you have Roman Reigns versus John Cena, Edge versus Seth Rollins, Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks, and then you look at Raw. Oldberg versus Lashley. Shanky, I mean, um, Jinder Mahal versus Drew McIntyre, apparently. And Nikki A.S.H. versus Rhea Ripley and Charlotte and Sherbot. Just look at those three matches right there. Six matches right there. SmackDown feels like it's producing a SummerSlam card. While Monday Night Raw is going to bum you out and is producing Bummerslam. Because, my God... It, they, all these matches from Monday Night Raw just look like shit. And tonight was not just an episode of Monday Night Raw. It was rematch of mania Because we had not one, not two, but three rematches from last week. This is what we got on Monday Night Raw. You look at Monday Night Raw. You look at SmackDown and it's like, you can't tell me that the same people who are writing Smack Monday Night Raw are writing SmackDown. Because SmackDown... Is definitely the A show has more love to it because you have Roman Reigns and everything goes on with him, the Mysterios, Edge, all that. Smart Raw, you got nothing. This entire show fucking sucks from top to bottom. From 8 to 11, this show fucking sucks. And you know, there was news, and of course, we all know what happened on this past Saturday as Bray Wyatt was released from WWE. Why they say budget cuts, I don't buy that worth a shit. But as Mickey James pointed it out, it, it it's quite clear that WWE was planning on getting rid of Bray Wyatt sooner rather than later. They were going to get rid of him after they started doing the whole Alexa Bliss thing and they broke that thing off. You knew they were going to get rid of him. He is one of the most creative guys in professional wrestling today. You have him up there. I think, he, well, Matt Hardy is one of the most creative guys with all those different personalities to come up with. But this guy spent so much money, so much heart, blood, sweat, and tears, heart, and soul to reinvent himself not once but twice in his career after the failure of Husky Harris, after the Eater of Worlds became the Eater of Pins and disappeared for so long to give us the Mr. Rogers slash Fiend character. And he came out in 2019, that match against Finn Balor, the entrance at SummerSlam, one of the creepiest fucking entrances I have ever seen. And then two months later, they, they, they the, the chains came off, the chains came back on, they ruined him once. Then he goes to Saudi Arabia, wins the championship, goes to SmackDown, goes to Saudi, go to Saudi Arabia again to face Oldberg last year. And loses in less than three minutes. Goes and fights Braun Strowman in one of the worst cinematic matches in WWE history with that Swamp Fight. Wins the Universal title at, at SummerSlam last year. Loses it a week later. And then the awful, awful, awful storyline. The awful feud with Randy Orton that just never seemed to end. And then he gets set on fire. He disappears. He had one match in 2021. That was at WrestleMania in which he gets distracted by his former friend, his former ally, the person he turned into who she is now, Alexa Bliss. He loses to one RKO, which is actually, I think, worse than three spears and a jack and a suplex. Has one more segment on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. And is never seen again. What's going to happen to Wyndham Rotunda? I, Rotundo? I don't know. But Bray Wyatt is dead. Should be buried. I don't want to see. With how creative this guy is. I really do not want to see another Wyatt-like character. And of course you have idiots online that's like, Oh, he should go to AEW and join the Dark Order and be the leader. No, you fucking idiots. 
The Bray Wyatt character is dead. He's not going to be that character anymore. He needs to go the total opposite. The total opposite. Don't be the Bray Wyatt character. Don't be the Fiend. Just go the whole 180 or 360 or whatever it is. The 180 and be the total polar opposite. But we'll find out in 90 days. Which honestly, it should be cut down for him because we haven't seen him since the night after WrestleMania ended. So, will he be in AEW? Don't know. Will he go to Impact? Don't know. Will he go to Ring of Honor? Do not know. We don't know if this guy is going to go anywhere. He might just be happy having his two kids. JoJo, his woman, got fired back in January, apparently. So, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with, with Wyndham. Where he goes, if we even see him again, and what his plans are. Hell, he can use the next 90 days crafting up a new character, do what Malachi Black did, shows us a video on Instagram or, so, or Twitter or any other social media, YouTube, whatever, and we find it out there that he's this new character. So... That is that news. And then, of course, yesterday it came out, apparently, that Adam Cole is on... The WWE pulled a Jeff Jarrett on Adam Cole. Like, do they not have somewhere on one of their phones or some kind of computer or something that alerts when somebody's contract is coming up? Not, oh, shit, Adam Cole's contract is up. We don't have Adam Cole on the contract, and he has this match at TakeOver um, in your house. Oh, well, it's coming up. So, Adam Cole, of course, extended to TakeOver 36 the night after SummerSlam. So, maybe this is why Adam Cole, Kyle Rally hasn't ended yet, is because they don't know what Adam Cole is doing. Of course, it's like Adam Cole's talked about it before. Adam Cole loves Shawn Michaels, loves working with Triple H, loves like working with his childhood heroes. That could be something that keeps him there. However, especially what's happened with Karrion Cross tonight and what's been going on with Karrion Cross and anybody who's come up from NXT pretty much over the last few years, we all know what's going to happen to Adam Cole if Adam Cole comes up to the main roster. They're not going to do anything with him. They're not going to have him win. He's just going to get beat left and right. And it's going to be worthless. So, yeah. I, if I was Adam Cole, I'm getting out of here. My contract's coming up. I'll do the jobs. I'll do the honors for my best bud, Kyle Valley. Set him up to do whatever they want to do. Maybe him and Samoa Joe at the Samoa Joe, of course, clearly beats Karrion Cross at the... Um, at TakeOver, and yeah, you have Kyle O'Reilly and them win, like Kyle O'Reilly be the next NXT champion coming out of TakeOver 36 on the way to whatever TakeOver they have after that. Which should be War Games, actually, right? If they do War Games this year. So, Adam Cole, and of course if Adam Cole leaves the, um, WWE, you know he's going to AEW. He's got his friends there, the, the um, elites, his girlfriend's there. Which would be great. She's going to be shoved down her throat even more. So many things that he could be doing in AEW. That would actually show how that AEW appreciates Adam Cole more than WWE would ever appreciate Adam Cole. Shawn Michaels, Triple H, they appreciate Adam Cole. Tri Vince McMahon, do you see who they're pushing? Do you see the size of the men and women they want? Like the men they want to push? It sure ain't Adam Cole. Adam Cole will come up, and Adam Cole will get jack shit. And that's the truth. And if you don't believe it, I don't know what to tell you. But that is Adam Cole just... It's like, Adam Cole's got two choices. Either re-sign with WWE and do nothing on the main roster whenever they bring you up, if they ever do bring you up, or go to AEW... Well, then you can also go to New Japan, or you could go to Impact Wrestling, or you can go to New Japan Strong, or if you want to, you can go back to Ring of Honor. You've got so many other opportunities 
outside of WWE, there was literally no reason to have this guy stay in WWE. He's been in NXT since 2000 and what, 7, 6, 15? What else are they going to do with Adam Cole? It's either he comes up, does nothing on the main roster, or does the job for his bud, leaves, and go does something else. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Maybe what comes maybe by the end of the week, Adam Cole resigns his contract. Who knows? But Adam Cole leaving would not surprise me. But also him staying would not surprise me. I would say leave and go somewhere else. Just saying. Now, MVP and Bobby Lashley start the show. MVP welcomes Shy Town back to Raw and says he knows everyone is excited about Goldberg. Fans are booing. MVP says Goldberg comes out. The Almighty has asked MVP to address a few things. He brings up how Goldberg came to the show uninvited weeks back and challenged Lashley, but Lashley has not dignified that challenge with a response. He says, without question, Goldberg is a GOAT, an icon, able to annihilate any man on any given night, but he didn't challenge any man. He challenged the Almighty. MVP says, Goldberg is a gladiator, used to stepping in the Coliseum and squashing any other gladiator, but Lashley is not a gladiator. He is a kaiju. An unstoppable force, a monster. Does MVP know what a kaiju is? MVP is here to prevent the tra- a tragedy. The Oldberg chant star, and you can quite clearly tell these are piped in. There are people chanting it, but like they're panning to when you know, like when Oldberg's mu- some name would cha- be chanted. The fans, would you would actually see the fans chanting it? You pan to the Shy Town crowd, and like very few people were chanting it. Most people just sitting there is like. What the fuck? So, clearly, WWE... What's the point? It's like, WWE would much rather be in the Blunder Dome. They, they, would, they would be fine with you paying for the ticket, but don't show up because they're going to change the volume of you guys, of, of the crowd. But to anybody who actually sits there and chants Oldberg, you, you're part of the problem. Uh, so... So out comes Oldberg. He wants to want, get one thing straight. If anyone should be worried about losing something, it's Lashley losing the WWE title. Oldberg says after listening to MVP's intro, he knows MP is, MVP is not but nothing but scared and Lashley. But scared and Lashley, Oldberg is facing now. Oldberg says Lashley looks scared. Look, he knows that what Lashley is thinking, that he, Lashley, is high-level athlete and gladiator like Oldberg. The Oldberg chants get louder even though you can tell they're being piped in. Oldberg stops speaking, he says, but a high-level athlete questions himself, and Gladius shows no weakness. He laughs, he asks if he's up, if Lashley is up for the challenge, because when Lashley first saw him walk down the ramp, he saw Oldberg as his next victim in his Coliseum. Oldberg says this isn't his Coliseum, this is Chicago, and the fans here can smell fear a mile away, and Lashley either crapped his pants or is scared out of his mind. Oldberg says... It doesn't matter if he's 35, 45, or even 105, he will always be Oldberg. Oldberg lives by, super, by spear, the spear, and you champ will die by the spear. Fans are cheering and booing. Oldberg says that's why he's Oldberg. And because he's Oldberg at SummerSlam champ, you're next. Drop the mics, exit the ring. Starts up and Lashley continues staring him down, seeing in the ring. MVP points at Oldberg's son. Which, by the way, that his son has grown into a... Looks like he's going to be a powerhouse. It looks like father like son. My God, the first time we saw Gage on TV was back in, what, 2014? 2016? Yeah, 2016 when Old Bird came back. He was a chubby little kid. The dude got, grew up. He's got, he looks like he's putting on the pounds in the muscle, man. My God. Like, he grew, and he grew fast. So, Lashley comes out. He looks down at um, Oldberg's son. MVP comes down. Lashley goes back in the ring and raises his title, while MVP says some things to Oldberg's son, saying that his son, his father is scared or whatever. Oldberg comes down and hits the weakest and slowest spear I have ever seen. Lashley helps MVP with his feet as there are Bray Wyatt chants all over. But of course they were drowned out because this is WWE. You see, 
If this was Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, AEW, any independent promotion, or AEW, you would hear the chance. WWE are too much, too cowardly to let their fans have a voice. You bitched. You put out fucking video packages when you were welcoming, welcoming, welcoming the fans back about how you miss the fans, how you miss their passion and their cheers and their chants, and what do you fucking do when you release a very lo- beloved superstar in Bray Wyatt and they chant his name, you drown them out, you fucking cowards. Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn, Bruce Richard, you're fucking cowards, and you will always be nothing but shriveling little cowards. Give me a fucking break. And then we go from this terrible fucking segment to a two-on-one handicap match as Drew McIntyre has to take on Via and Shanky. The show continues to fucking suck. Remember when Drew McIntyre was WWE champion only six months ago or so? Remember when he was champion for most of the uh, the Blunder Dome? How this guy put the WWE Championship on his back and carried it for a majority of last year. Most of last year and the beginning of this year. Now, he, now he's feuding with Jinder Mahal over his sword. And is having a two-on-one handicap match. With Via and Shanky. Who gives a shit about Via and Shanky? I don't care. Drew wins by DQ because, of course, Jinder Mahal has to bring a chair in. He hits him with the chair to cause the DQ. Via and Shanky both get chairs, but Drew. Gets out of the ring, comes back in with his claymore that he brought down to the ring with him. Hits the claymore on the chair, which one you should never do, and two is fucking stupid. Send, sending G, um, Jinder Mahal running. Then Via and Shanky, like Via, drops his chair and leaves. Shanky, he just holds up. Goes for a swing. Shanky, of course, leaves. Or, yeah, Shanky, of course, leaves. And we go to the backstage, we see the three goons, the modern day Phil Raja and his two henchmen running from one man with a sword, even though Drew McIntyre was still in the ring celebrating. Load of shit. <laughs> Nia Jax is backstage with Shayna. She says, if you thought what you saw was something, wait until you see what she does to Ray Ripley. We go back to commercial break. And then we go to Nia Jax versus Rhea Ripley. We went from a shitty promo to start the show, a shitty two-on-one handicap match with the DQ finish, to Ray Ripley versus Nia Jax. Are we going to get anything good in this show tonight? Are you fucking kidding me? By the way, the main event is Charbonne versus Nikki Trash in a no-holds-barred match, and we'll get to that later. So, you have this match. Somewhere in this match... Nia Jax got cut all up and her face is ha- like half of her face is bleeding. Rayo wins with a roll up after Shayna Baszler tries to distract Rhea. It doesn't work. Rhea gets the better of Nia Jax and pins her. And she of course for most a couple times in the match she tried to hit the riptide. It did not work. She was actually gonna try and hit the riptide. Shayna Baszler, of course, distracted. That led to the roll-up win, and that was that. After the match, Rhea Ripley, I'm not Rhea Ripley, but Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler argue back and forth. Let's get like little bitches. Ray, Nia Jax says, fuck this shit, leaves like a smart person would. Rhea comes back in, hits the riptide finally, and that is that. And then we go to Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. Hometown kid, Chicago's own Mustafa Ali. Versus Mace and T-Bar. We're in Chicago. Mustafa Ali is from here. Who do you think was going to win this match? Oh, that's right. Mace and T-Bar win. After Mansoor tries to um, hold T-Bar down. So Ali could go up. He gets kicked back. Knocking Ali down. Ali 
gets knocked out of the ring. Mansoor eats the high justice. Or hit, hit, eats a knee strike and then a running boot for the pin in the ring. After the map, Mason P- T-Bar stand tall and head to the ring sign. We go to the ring players. Ali is standing over Mansoor. Mason T-Bar comes from behind, but Ali pushes Mansoor out to the floor. He takes the high justice. They leave. Mansoor comes back in to check on him and Lee wise down. Mason T-Bar look on from the stage. Bleh! We see what happens last week between Charlotte and Nikki's trash. Nikki is backstage running back and forth. Out comes Sherbots, and this is going to get WWE some hate. And I hope it does. Everybody knows that if you've been paying attention and everything, that during the Olympics, um, little like halfway through last week, Simone Biles dropped out, pulled out of her last few events for mental reasons. I'm not going to go into anything on that. I'm not going to criticize her or anything else. It's just, hey, health before anything else, that's all you can say. So, WWE had Charbot go out here and try to compare herself to Simone Biles. Of course, she gets the Becky chance, which apparently Becky Lynch is supposed to be turning after SummerSlam instead of, you know, at SummerSlam, which would have been smart. But the fact that you're going to have Charlotte, Charbot, go out there Bitch, moan, and complain about things that make no goddamn sense. Compare herself to somebody who's had, who had a probably had a real mental problem um, breakdown. You know, wrestling, um, Olympics, stuff like that, sports like that. You have mental hurdles you have to get over, and she had her problems. You don't have to have that happen. Where well, you're gonna have this woman. Go out there and try and compare her her struggles, her scripted struggles, to somebody who is having real struggle struggles. It's just so fucking stupid. So she bitches, she moans, she whines, she complains, just like she would fucking do. She bitch, she moans, she whined and complained the fact that she has not been cashed. She's not like the fact that people have won money in the bank and cashed on her not once, not twice, but three times. There have only been four money in the bank briefcase holders for the women. Guess who wasn't the one to cash in on her? That would be Oscar last year. And if everything would have worked out differently and Becky didn't get pregnant, I bet you she would have cashed in too, making it four years in a row. But she bitches, she moans, she puts um, weapons in the ring, talking about how she's going to beat up and destroy Nikki later in the night. Nikki comes from behind, hits her with a with a chair, and sends her off. More boring, boring, boring bullshit. And then we get a recap of Eve Marie getting dis- like distracted by Lily with her Lily Lucian and her. Crying and complaining backstage. This leads to Tamina versus Piper Niven. I will never call her that derogatory name that they gave her. Just like I never called Chad Gable that derogatory name they gave him at one time. The sooner they get this Eva Marie Piper Niven um, storyline over with, the better. You let Bray Wyatt go, Malachi, um, Alistair Black, and all these other talented men and women go this year. But yet you have room on your TV, on your schedule, for Eva fucking Marie. Give me a break. So Piper Niven took on Eva, um, took on Tamina. Match was nothing special. Tamina holding both tag team titles because her, ta- her partner was injured last week when Piper Niven went for something and ended up rolling on the ankle of... Natalia, so that, them, I am speedy recovery for Natalia. She had surgery, I believe it was on Saturday or Friday of last week. Yeah, she was, it was Saturday, probably Friday last week. So, speedy recovery to her. Apparently, they were supposed to address the women's tag team titles tonight. They even announced that on Friday they were going to address the women's tag team titles, I believe. They did not do that. They did not say that Tamina needs to find a partner or Tamina has to vacate the titles. They just let Tamina come out, hold both championships, and have a match with Piper Niven, win, and then walk off. 
Of course, after the match, Eva Marie is saying something to Piper. We can't really hear because the mic's not on. The crowd, the crowd noise is coming in. Alexa Bliss comes up on the screen with Lily and says, The loser of this match is Eva Marie. And she laughs about it. I'm over this. So yeah. We went from Shayna Baszler and, and Alexa Bliss in a match. To now we're going to have Alexa Bliss versus Eva Marie. Probably Piper Niven, but still. Oh god, I can't. I, this woman's division is trash. Did you know that Corey Graves called Charlotte Flair, Charlotte Bot 9000, the embodiment of the raw women's like the of the raw women's division, pretty much saying that she's the standard of the raw women's division, and the raw women's division has been trash since Becky Lynch left and wasn't doing much better with Becky Lynch there. So yeah, if that's your embodiment or your like standard of the women's division on Raw, that's a very very low bar. Ray Ripley's come up, done nothing. Where the fuck is Oscar at? She's disappeared, apparently. Just the women's division on Raw sucks. Just like Monday Night Raw fucking sucks. So, moving on here. We see a Damian Priest won his US, the non-title U.S. title match last week. So in a future title shot, Priest, Priest is backstage when Riddle and they do a bunch of comedy. I really don't give a shit. We had Miz TV. Don't really give a shit about this. It pissed off. Damien Priest got pissed off. And he gets pissed off. Ends up sending Morrison out, out of the ring to take a bunch of drip sticks and stuff and spray him on the Miz. Takes the buckets, throws it on him. So he's completely covered in whatever the fuck they're using, whether it's water or something else. Leads to John Morrison versus Damien Priest. The match was not very long. Sit up, powerbomb, choke slam. For the pin in the win for Damian Priest. Why was it not a long match? Because Sheamus comes out and attacks Damian Priest. Out comes Ricochet. We're going to have a tag team match. Player, player, player. This company, I swear. No creativity. Why do you have to be so goddamn Predictable. It's so stupid. I don't understand this shit. I just don't understand why this company has to be so bad. You have some of the most talented people on your fucking roster. And it's rematch, 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 rematch. Oh, you saw that match three months ago, four times in a row? We're going to do it again. And again, and again, and again. And it's like, God damn it, I hate this fucking company. So the babyfaces win with Priest hitting the Reckoning on John Morris, and apparently it's the Reckoning now again. I don't know why they changed it from hit the light from hit from Reckoning to hit the lights to back to reckon the Reckoning. Maybe that's because Mia Yim is no longer going to be called Reckoning. That's that's the only thing I can think of. They changed the, they changed his finisher's name because they gave Mia Yim the name of Reckoning for Retribution. And since Retribution is no longer a thing, and Mia Yim is probably not going to be called Reckoning anymore, his finisher could be called the Reckoning again. What the fuck, WWE? What the fuck? <sighs> we see what happened with Oldberg and Bobby Lashley. Lashley is pacing backstage. He responds to Oldberg next. Back to commercial break. Back from break, and Shadow Shabu is with the champion. MVP is trying to talk, but he can't because he's selling the spear. Lashley says he hopes Oldberg brings his son to SummerSlam so he can watch Lashley annihilate him. And they walk off to confirm, and we get a confirmation that that match is happening. So, I do not care about this match. Like I said earlier, just look at Raw in the three matches we, so, we pretty much know so far. Or we know so far. Look at the three matches on SmackDown that are pretty much going to happen. One side looks like absolute garbage, and the other side looks like a damn good pay-per-view. Half of a pay-per-view. And yet, this is one company. And it's I, I just don't get how SmackDown, which isn't really the greatest. I mean, outside of Roman Reigns and a few things here and there with Edge and Mysterios right now, it seems like. Nothing else on that show really matters, but that's way more than what you have on Raw, where nothing matters. 
Raw well, Tag Team Champion Omos versus Matt Riddle. This match was pretty much just Matt Riddle trying to do everything he could to beat up on Omos and knock him over. Couldn't do that. Omos actually took him out of the ring once and threw him over the barricade trying to get a count out. It didn't work. Omos ends up beating him and no AJ Styles this week either. No Randy Orton return either, so I don't know what the hell they're doing with um, any of this. Omos hits the big time lifting slam, but I don't know what Riddle was trying to do because his leg almost caught, almost landed first, which would have been a broken leg probably. After the match, Omos stands tall as the music hits. He raises the belt over and, talk, and talks tra some trash to him. Bliss is backstage talking with Lily when Piper Niven attacks her from behind, kicks her in the stomach. Eva Marie appears to insult Lily and Bliss, saying this thing's more uglier and, and in person than she thought. Welcomes them to Evolution before walking off with Piper Niven. Lily suddenly stands up and starts laughing. Next. NXT champion Karrion Cross takes on Keith Lee because we have to have rematch, 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 rematch on rematch of Mania August 2nd, 2021. Really good match, I will say. But of course, this is WWE. What does WWE do when it comes to rematch of Mania? 50 50 booking. Who do you think was going to win this match? It wasn't going to be Karrion Cross. I guess the word is, is that if Jeff Hardy didn't get COVID, Jeff was going to beat Karrion Cross last week, beat him this week, beat him the week after that, until Scarlett eventually came up and gave him that little thing that he's missing to unleash the gladiator known as Karrion Cross. Definitely a hard-hitting match. These guys work really well together. Spirit bomb from Ke from Keith Lee to Cross. Cross loses. He's two one and two in his WWE main roster career. And just with the way that they're treating Karrion Cross, why wouldn't Matt? Why wouldn't Adam Cole just want to leave? Seriously. Like this is how they're gonna treat. This is how Adam Cole would be treated on main roster television. A guy who could be a WrestleMania main eventer by this time next year if he came up at SummerSlam is going to come up. They're going to do jack shit with him and he'll regret not leaving to go be with his woman and his friends in AEW. 24-7 champion Matt Reggie versus Akira Tozawa. Don't really give a shit. Reggie wins. Moving on. Nikki A.S.H. or Nikki Trash versus Sharbot 9000. It's a hardcore no, no disqualification match. But again, this is rematch, rematch, rematch of Mania. Who do you think was going to win this match? Do you think Sharbot was going to win another match? No, we got to make it 50-50 because I don't get how anybody thinks 50-50 booking is great for your product. The only time that you do... A 50-50 is so you can get a rubber match, and then that rubber match goes to one of the guys that you want to push while the other guy moves on to something else, or goes down the card. You don't do 50-50 for everybody because nobody comes out looking stronger. Sharbot won last week. This week she loses to a purge off the top rope. What else am I supposed to expect? Nikki takes the title, clutches in the music hits, fans cheer on, Nikki lays on the mount with the title as Flair begins to recover, as we... Get ready to re as we go to replay. She stands tall in the middle of the ring, raising the title in the air. The announcers plug the triple threat match at SummerSlam as Nikki goes to the crowd to celebrate, and Raw goes off the air. I don't know what to tell you. This company has got to be the dumbest fucking company in all of professional wrestling. They they don't care. They haven't cared. I don't know what everyone has to expect for them. They do not fucking care. And they will not fucking care. Ever again. As long as Vince McMahon has that fucking pen to write what he wants, then they're not going to fucking care. But this is what you got. But that is your 
Monday Night Raw review. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Find me on Mize at the Fountains Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash the Fountains Club. And find me on Instagram at the Fountains Club. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for AEW Homecoming, where real, logical, professional wrestling actually exists. Until then, my name is the Fountains, and I'll see you guys later.